Shalom everyone, um, it's me again, Rashid, and um, I see that my past videos are receiving a lot of views. I'm glad with that. I hope that the Holy Spirit is reaching you through my videos. But okay, today I want to talk about... Um, I made a video, I believe it was... Uh, they are turned its name they are becoming desperate and homicidal in which I've explained that when your persi when persistent accusers the Bible calls them reprobates when persistent accusers see that their accusations and their violence against you does not work out your downfall but that every time they attack you every time they gossip about you every time they give you a bad name things turn around for your good anyway then they'll realize that yes, they are attacking you, they're doing what they want, they're lashing out, they don't care about it, but it's not working out what they want. So basically, without them wanting it, they are contributing to your success, they are contributing to your greatness, they are contributing to your well-being. And it's them attacking you, and they know that there's a higher power behind you. They, they may not agree that it's the most high, some of them acknowledge that it is the most high that's behind you, but they will see that there is a higher power, or some know that is that is God that is turning their attacks around for your favor. So, if they didn't attack you, nothing would be turned around in your favor. So they will recognize that they are now being used by the Most High Himself to to promote you. So their anger, their rejection is now turning in your in your approval. You see, and they hate this because they can't control it. So what happens now? The more they see that they can't, cannot do anything to you, the more desperate they become to keep on attacking you and to, they become homicidal. You see? They're going to plan to murder you, to conspire against you, and if they can't get you, they will, they will pour out their frustration upon someone else. Because you don't understand. They saw you as a waste of time. They saw you as an abomination. And now, they've resisted you and they thought, well, if I attack him, do harm to him, it will be over. It's not over. So they kept going after you. They don't want to admit that they are wrong. So they keep on attacking to get you down, but they can't. So then they will realize we've lost a lot of time and our negativity has also ruined our own lives. So when they realize this, how stupid they've become and how embarrassing they are, they'll, they'll go in full rage. They don't repent, they go in full rage. Just look at Pharaoh. In the Old Testament, Pharaoh refused to let people go. Even after 10 plagues, he didn't want to let them go, but he was forced to let them go. He said, okay, a big part of the Egyptian population is dead now. All the firstborn are dead. Our economy is, has been wrecked. And the people are tired. I need to let these people go. Or else they will, they will finish off with, with us. So, he allowed the Israelites to go. When the Israelites were gone, the Egyptians began to murmur, why did we allow them to go? You know, and Pharaoh and the Egyptians, they sent their whole army to devour the Israelites. So hold on a minute. They already had 10 plagues that ruined their economy and their politics. They also had that the 10th plague also killed a, a large sum of the population. So they realized we had to let these people go. And to, re to ease their guilt for the slavery, they gave up to their wealth to the Israelites. So now the Israelites who were abused were being mistreated and and ill-treated they now became rulers they left Egypt but they left with all the wealth of Egypt you see and this lost the Egyptians and Pharaoh couldn't they couldn't bear it they couldn't bear that okay they were wrong and all their efforts to resist the will of God was futile so now they went into full-blown rage and they didn't care anymore if they would lose or win. They just went in full-blown rage. You see, and that's what you need to understand. Persistent accusers, when they can't get you, they will go into full-blown rage against others, either against their own children or against their spouses, or if they are in a government position, they will try to go against a random um, ethnic groups. You see? That's how persistent accusers are. And now there's another thing I want to point out to you. It's not always possible for persistent accusers to go in a full-blown rage against someone else. Why? Because it may cost them a lot. Maybe they are, maybe 
let's say you are a Chris, you are a Christian woman, you are a believer, and you have another woman who, who envies you and who is offended by you, but she is married with a family, and to go into full rage it would embarrass her and her family, so she cannot act out. But what happens now? She is holding on to negativity, so it will ruin her on the inside, and within a span of time. She becomes, she becomes bitter, resentful, hateful, and eventually her marriage and her family falls apart. You understand what I'm saying here? Or it can be that you have persistent accusers, a whole group that unites against you, but when they see that all they do against you does not work, they become afraid. And then what happens? They, they might decide, okay, we're not thinking about it, we don't even talk about it anymore, but they are still holding on to negativity. And they're always trying to protect people from finding out the truth. So what what happens? Because they hold on to negativity, they have attracted demons onto them, and now they are attracting dangerous people onto them that will harm them in their future. You see, such things also happen. So you need to understand this, okay? Envy is rottenness of the bones, the Bible says in the Proverbs, okay? So when people envy you, envy doesn't have to mean... When we think about envy, we think about you having something they want. No, envy is a judgment of how people determine you have to be according to their mental constructions. And it can be that you have a benefit that doesn't line up with how they want things to be. And that's why they have, become, they have a judgment against you that they want, they, want, they want consequences for you so that they can feel good about themselves. And when those consequences don't happen, they, they freak out, they become upset. And so basically offense I'm not talking about when people attack you and you become upset because they have attacked you okay when a burglar is in your house and you become scared and you act out okay that's not you wanting to harm anyone you were in brought in danger I'm not talking about that okay about offense they, they want the cause to come upon you you see and it doesn't happen so what also happens is that when persistent accusers are losing and they are in full-blown rage, it, their, neg their negative energy that is building up and building up, it will either explode one day that they will kill someone randomly or kill a whole bunch of people. That's what's happening in mass shootings. And remember, most mass shootings happen within, pe within the family structure, within people who know each other, close family and friends. Seldom does it happen that our mass shooting happens in the public space. It does happen a lot, but most of the mass shootings happen within people who know each other. Okay? So that's why an envious person is, is very dangerous because even if they are not anything you, they have nothing against you, they are dangerous because whenever they lash out, whenever they um, lose it, you are a target. Okay? What also happens is that when they're naked, either they kill people or their health. Is, uh, they have to pay the price with their health because when you have negativity in your spirit in your soul it will work out on your body so you have people that get cancer they get um, rheumatics they get um, breathing problems they get tumors they get all kinds of plagues because of their agreement with, with darkness and um, uh, listen when this happens, guys, you see, we only see um, their their health going, getting worse. That's what we're seeing. So when you hear, for example, that the aunt or the grandfather of a co-worker of a, or a fellow student has, or your own grandpa or aunt or someone around you has cancer, we tend to become scared and tend to think oh that's very horrible it is horrible okay the disease is horrible or they have a tumor it is horrible of course it is you see and most of the time when we hear that someone has a disease we automatically think they are victims and most of the time it's true most of the time when people have a disease they are victims they're either victims of their own ignorance that was enforced upon them by their youth in their in their youth in their childhood and that's being uh, held together by their environment or they are victims of the negative energy of others that can also cause sickness and terminal disease. It can. But there are a few instances 
I say a few because everyone at the right mind would repent. Okay, but there are instances when persistent e persistent evildoers or persistent accusers are basically reaping what they have sown. They have carried negativity inside of them for so long that now, without them being aware of it, their body, as they have victimized their own body, and now the symptoms of their decay is has become visible. You see? And, of course, you're not aware of it, okay? But the thing is, that individual who is now reaping what they have sown, they are aware of it. You see? But they will always play the victim, okay? So listen, when you hear someone has cancer or tumor or some terminal disease, don't go with your finger, point out that it's their fault. No. Like I say, most of the time, people are, are victims. They are. But there are times you need to have discernment. Sometimes someone is just reaping what they've sown, okay? And it's not only with physical disease, it also can be with suicide, you see? Many people that commit suicide, they are traumatized, they can't bear the pain anymore, and their environment won't stop abusing them. So, they, want, they can't deal with the pain, so their way out is to end life, okay? Now, it's not the way out, the way out is Jesus Christ, but even that information is not held from them. So, there are a lot of people that commit suicide, they are victims, okay? Let's acknowledge this, victims do exist. Also, adult victims, they exist. But, not all suicides. You see, there are times that persistent accusers have become homicidal, but they don't pick up a gun and shoot people, or they don't come with a knife, or they don't hire a hitman to kill someone, but they just keep speaking out they keep speaking bad about someone, they keep speaking harm upon someone, they keep wishing negativity upon someone, so they are homicidal in the spirit, okay? And that's that's very um, dangerous. What happens now, the individual that they are wishing to die, the person they are wishing to get sick or something bad and evil to happen to the individual, you see, that individual may have someone somewhere praying for him. Okay, so for example, you can have... As you guys know, I enjoy using parables and examples. Okay, I'm going to give an example now. It may sound familiar to you. I don't know. It's something I made up to make make my points clear. Okay, let's say that you have a girl. She's in her. She's 14 years old. No, let me say 13 years old, and she and there is. Let me say there's a neighbor that is offended with her parents. And now that woman keeps on raging against those parents. And she keeps speaking evil on the parents. And then she sees the child and she decides to, okay, I can't get the parents. So to get to the parents, I'm going to wish harm on the child. You see, she speaks negative about the child. You see, they don't have to do potions or santeria or, or a religious witchcraft. You just can wish harm. Let's say that the girl now, because of the negativity, her sexual development is distorted, okay? And now, her parents were also subjected to, neg to persistent negative attacks by demons because the neighbor that was offended released demons onto them by his or, his or her, her persistent negativity, you see? And those demons caused, you know... Uh, marriage problems, and also family problems. And now the girl was traumatized in her teenage years by her mother also, but the trauma caused her to... It caused her sexual development to go wrong, and now she... She she does like boys, but she also has this attraction to women. And she now doesn't know why it happened, but she has this attraction. And then she, when she's 16, she goes online and she encounters um, gay-friendly Christian ministries and all of that, and she and she hears, you're born that way. And she, she agrees with it, I'm born this way. But she realizes somewhere that, okay, this is not right, but okay, she agrees with it. Now, when she's in her 19s and 20s, she's completely confused. She goes either way. She's hooked up with a few girls. She has, she has become more hostile towards men. She has developed male tendencies. And 
she's suffering emotionally and she tries to get as much people away from her because now she has become socially hostile also towards others. Now, anyone that would encounter this young woman in her twin when she's 20 years old would say, she's a bitch. She, she is, who the hell she thinks she is? She's unkind, she says blah, blah, blah. They would begin to accuse her. And by them, them accusing her, they are adding to the negativity that's working in her. Okay, it can be that she has become unkind. Okay, she is unkind, she's responsible for that, but it was contributed and inf she was infected, okay? Her responsibility is to go for safety. Well, she can't go for safety because she's not aware of what's going on, okay? To her, for her, in her view, that's how she is, okay? But, okay, but now let's say you have a Christian now who, does not, who doesn't know about the envious neighbor in the past, doesn't know about the negative energy, and doesn't know about all of that. He just, that Christian was treated badly by this girl. But this Christian decides to obey the teachings of Jesus. Okay, I'm not going to pay evil for evil by coming, I'm going to repay evil with good. I'm going to overcome evil with good. And this Christian prays for this girl. Okay, the Christian moves on. It can be a male Christian or female Christian, doesn't matter, Christian prays. Now, the Christian, years may pass, but the Christian doesn't see any development with the girl. The woman is still, she's now fully into a homosexual lifestyle. She's now fully also into drugs and all of that. So the Christian thinks, well, I've prayed, but it didn't work. Hold on, hold on. Those neighbors of the past pronounce evil upon the family and also on the girl. There were also other people around her that that encountered her unkindness and also began to accuse her, you see? And some of those people even wish her death, literally, by their attitude, okay? But because that Christian prayed in agreement with Christ on her behalf, even if she's a pagan, she's an unbeliever, that prayer has released holy angels and power from the Most High upon that young woman, that prevented her from dying, that prevented her from getting AIDS, that prevented her from um, dying by alcohol poisoning, you see? She was going down by her own self-destructive behavior that was also contributed by others, but she agreed with it. She agreed with the curses. She's not aware of it, but still she agreed with it, and she was going down. But because of the prayer of a Christian, even just one time or two time prayer, there has been an effect has been released upon her. And now her enemies that wanted her dead, basically, is not happening. And what happens now? You see, let's say that that girl now becomes born again. But even if she doesn't become born again and she still goes to hell anyway, the fact alone that the Christian prayed for her had an impact. And look what's happening. When a Christian prays intercedes for someone else and someone gets delivered from a curse, it will automatically backfire on those that have sent it. Okay? And you're not aware of what's going on there, but it happens. You see, I just wanted to make this video to make clear to you that interceding is powerful. Intercession is powerful. Intercession doesn't always mean that what you've decreed always happens. Okay, but it, it is powerful. Okay, let me tell you guys, those some of you are watching this video now. The only reason you're alive now is because there was someone praying on your behalf and you were not aware of it. Some of you, I don't care if it was by your own contribution or the contribution of others, some of you were in very dangerous circumstances. Some of you should have been dead and eternally lost a long time ago. Some of you should have been in wheelchairs. Some of you would have should have become should have some of you should have been in prison now. Some of some of you should have become drug addicts. Some of you things should have been extremely wor extremely worse for you now. But it's because of the sincere Christ honoring prayer of a believer somewhere that things um didn't go as they should. There are people out there. I'm telling you, there are people out there who, are, who have grown old, they are in their 80s now, 
but they should have died when they were 23. Because when they were 23, the whole environment conspired against them. They kept, they kept wishing and bringing evil upon the individual, and a car accident happened to, to, to that individual because of it. And this is not magic. This is real, guys. When you release negativity, you release demons upon people. You see? But when that guy, when that guy was 23 years old, you see, there was this girl he was dating that he broke up with, but that girl still prayed for him, and because of that, even though he had a car accident, he, he survived. And he later married, had children, and his grandchildren have him now as their grandparent, but those grandchildren wouldn't have been there if he, would have, if he had died when he was 23 years old. So listen to what I'm saying here. Intercession is powerful. Never underestimate the impact of your prayers. You see, often we only look at immediate circumstances to see whether we are, we are or whether we have an impact or not. No, 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 no. Intercede for others. Because listen, persistent accusers, they are reprobates. They are bent to cause destruction. They are bent to, they will keep on accusing. Because listen, when someone is accused, when, accusate, when the spell of accusation is upon someone, everyone else is in danger. Why? Because negativity is contagious. You see? It's like a virus. So, listen, when you encounter people that are negative, that, are, that treat you, un that are unkind towards you, when that is happening, pray. Okay? If it's a persistent accuser, a reprobate, pray for justice. Ever keep on praying. Okay? Because... You may not be aware of what you are preventing, okay? Well, I wanted to make this clear to you that persistent accusers, when the Most High retaliates against them, we often think that when God takes vengeance, it's, it's God smiting them down. No, it's not always like that. Sometimes the Lord will just give them over to the negativity, and the negativity will finish off with them. And there are times that God raises up strong believers to to um, serve their victims, and now they will see their victims getting restored, and they will have to deal with it. That's also a form of retaliation that God is also doing. So the Most High may be retaliating against his enemies through you, and you're not even aware of it. Okay, but think about it, guys. Intercession is powerful. Look, intercession will not work for everyone. Especially most about persistent accusers. I can't guarantee you anything, okay? But just pray. Okay, and listen, there's another thing about intercession. Many people think that being Christian means you don't care, you don't pay any attention to yourself at all. That's not true. The thing is, God is paying attention to you. And that's why God wants you to be open and, and real with your desires. So that, he, so that he will receive his power, so that, you're, so that he will give you the desires of your heart. Because you reaching out to others are co is, is closely con is connected to the desires of your heart. Okay? Let me get an example. Let's say you like Korean or Japanese culture. Okay? And you pray, the Korean declare that you have Korean friends. Okay? And now, by circumstances come together and we have some Korean contacts on an app. And then, one of those contacts, you're not aware of it, but... She was verbally abused by her mother, and she was living under accusation, and it's really harmed her life. And now you were talking with her, and immediately this, the, the, the abuse comes up, and a few months back, you watch some YouTube videos about emotional abuse, and you also recommend her a book. She goes to the library, and she picks the book and reads it, and it helps her life. Were you aware that there was some woman at the other side of the earth that had, was, had an abusive childhood and is now under accusation. You didn't even know she existed. You just wanted to have more Korean context. Context because you are interested in Korean culture and the Korean land. And by you being real and open with your desires towards the Most High and by praying and agreeing with Christ, the desires of your heart are fulfilled and by your desires being fulfilled because the book of Proverbs makes clear that a fulfilled desire is like a tree of life because there are streams of living water coming forth out of you 
their desires fulfilled and their desire is now a blessing for others that is reaching others also. So being Christian does not mean neglecting yourself, it means denying yourself. Dying to self means entrusting yourself completely to the Most High and to operate in, in agreement with Him all the time. So your desires and intercession, they are connected, okay? Don't disconnect them, they are connected. So that's what I'm telling you, be the real you, okay? If the real you has some serious defects, who cares? The blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The forgiveness of Christ will work out all those ugliness out of you. Just move on, okay? Well, I hope this video has encouraged you. And um, may the grace of the Most High be with you. Shalom.